Today, my daddy is going to talk about the art books that changed his life. I am so excited. And in this video, I'm going to share with you and Maya the books that have influenced me as an artist and have shaped uh, the artist that I am today. We hope you enjoy these videos and please click like and also please punch that subscribe button and the bell to get notifications when the next video is about to come out. Art books, the ultimate guides of inspiration and reference for artists. As is true with most artistic disciplines, we are always looking up to past masters and artists who we admire to search for both ideas and insight. This takes us to our first book, Mickey Mouse, The Evolution, The Legend, The Phenomenon. There's not much more I can say about the genius of Walt Disney that hasn't been said before. Besides the originality of his artwork, to me, Disney's ability as a storyteller is what made him and his creations phenomenal. Every time you see a Mickey illustration somewhere, it kind of stimulates you to create some sort of magical situation or story around him. Mickey is such a relatable character that he broke the boundaries of countries, languages, cultures, ages, and gender. Everybody knows and likes Mickey Mouse. This encouraged me to always tell a story on each of my paintings and try to take the viewer on a journey with me. I was immediately drawn to its graphic simplicity, yet it fascinated me how Mickey was able to convey so many different feelings. He was sweet and lovable, but he's also funny and to a degree, at least in my opinion, has a superhero quality to him. Being drawn in black and white, it provides a neutral image that can then be easily contrasted with as many splashes of color as you wish, making the designs extremely versatile. Disney's designs taught me a lot about contrast, color combinations, and movement. This book takes you on a ride through the different stages of the character. And it even has some graphic model drawings showing the evolution of Mickey's design from his face and body to the movements during animation. This highlighted the importance of evolving as an artist without losing the soul of who you are. All in all, Disney's Mickey Mouse opened up for me the magical world of cartoons, storytelling, and color. The second book on my list is Picasso, The Artist of the Century. I know it sounds a bit like a cliche, but to be honest, no artist has ever ventured into so many stylistic evolutions with such ease and success as Picasso did. For example, if you look at his earlier work, it's semi-realistic and even has a Van Goghish stroke feel to it. He experimented with traditional anatomical features, but he always did display a preference for distorting realism. The colors were mostly monochromatic blues and rather dark, hence his blue period. In his first pivot, Picasso was inspired by traveling circuses and started his rose period. Harlequins and performers dominated his subjects. One thing I love about this period is that some of the paintings look kind of unfinished, almost sketch-like, if you will. Notice this one called Harlequin, Paul at the age of three, the legs of the chair are unpainted. Such a clever and different way to attain contrast. Look at the simplicity of Death of a Harlequin. 
drawing a parallel to what I said before about Mickey Mouse's telling a great story regardless of its graphic simplicity, here Picasso makes us ask ourselves so many things. Who was the Harlequin? Was he a good man? Why and how did he die? Are those his wife and son? As an artist, you dream of stimulating people in a way that makes them wonder about After a decade or so, under the tutelage of George Brack, Picasso started experimenting with Cubism. Just looking at the radical departure from his old style to this is absolutely mind-blowing. The way he dominated shapes and colors, even after distorting everything in his path, he still maintained exceptional balance and composition. The stories are still there. The color better than ever. In yet another twist, for a little while in his career he moves in a totally different direction into a sort of neoclassical style that sees him representing heavily built male and female figures. As if that wasn't enough, Picasso started experimenting with surrealism that produces such masterpieces as Guernica, The Three Dancers, and Woman Asleep on an Armchair. Again, that's five different art styles in less than 30 years. What can I say? The third book I'm talking about is Diez Años con Mafalda, or Ten Years with Mafalda. Mafalda's creator was an artist called Kino, and this cartoon was extremely popular in Latin America and Spain. Although it was good enough for kids, the cartoon's subjects were very much subjects that adults related to. Social critique, world news, family relations, friendship, and of course, Mafalda's love of the Beatles. This was the first time I actually sat down with pencil and paper and drew out characters from a comic book. I guess that the simplicity of the drawings helped me garner the courage to begin my journey as an artist. I vividly remember started by tracing the drawings at first. Following the lines proved to be an exhilarating experience. I felt for the first time what it was to create something out of nothing. Be it by copying the artist, it was still an awesome feeling. From there, I moved on to drawing out the characters by looking at them. This exercise further fueled my confidence. That's why I highly recommend beginner artists to use this exercise to help them practice and develop their style. I have a whole video in which I talk about art style development. I am putting the link up here in case you want to watch it later on. This was definitely a pivotal moment in my life. Mafalda changed the way I saw cartooning. Thank you, Kino. Talking about colors brings us to the fourth book that changed my life as an artist, and it's The Art of Peter Max. One of the few living artists who has achieved a high level of commercial success while alive, Max's pop style is just an explosion of color. This is easily one of the books I reference the most. He has made paintings for tons of famous people, from Mick Jagger to Bill Clinton to the Dalai Lama, and has been asked to draw posters for the World Cup, the Grammys, Woodstock 99, and even a commission for the body of a Boeing 777 of Continental Airlines. Peter Max taught me the uses and value of fine art, not only in its traditional media sense of canvas, paper, but also for commercial purposes. Back in 2005, I was going through my first transition in art style and his inspiration 
helped me venture into color experiments I had never thought of exploring before. Pop art has a very unique color palette. It thrives in bright and vivid colors. The use of pinks and purples was totally new to me, yet after watching how Max uses them, they have become very prominent in my work. Sometimes as an artist, I tend to get comfortable with the color palette I use at the time, and after a while, it may become a bit monotonous. The problem lies in how this can hamper my creativity. This book helped me at a time I was going through such a phase and expanded my use of color considerably. It taught me not to be scared of experimenting with new styles, colors, composition, and subjects. Because part of being an artist is pushing yourself to go places you have never thought you would go and opening your mind to the greatness of other artists. Your style and technique will define how you apply what you have learned and this exercise will shape your journey for years to come. Daddy, that was awesome. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad you did and I hope all of you did as well. We hope to see you soon for part two of this video.